Good afternoon and assalamu alaikum. Um, I want to thank the Ahmadiyya community and especially the organizers, Amjad and everyone else, who have been working so hard to get such a great panel of experts to talk up here today. Um, for me, I will discuss very quickly, of course, in five minutes if I can, um, my research focus, which is on um, the rights of minorities in Pakistan. Uh, we're looking at human rights, constitutional rights, etc. So two major issues come, I think, or are raised in Pakistan, especially now, and it's becoming worse. I think as time progresses. First is something that a speaker earlier on discussed, hate crime. Um, hate crime has risen in great deals in Pakistan. It hasn't been dealt with in a very specific manner. Um, there hasn't been punishment, there hasn't been prevention, and so that sort of allows for individuals to be targeted from the Ahmadiyya community, from the Shia community, from other communities, um, and the people who attack them oftentimes have impunity or oftentimes do not get prosecuted by the law. And that's a huge problem and that needs to be addressed in Pakistan in many ways. Um, three ways that I can describe um, are that the police need to be better trained, of course, to prosecute actual hate crime, which they don't do much these days. Second, there needs to be prosecutorial training. Essentially, the lawyers who are prosecuting individuals, they have to know what hate crime is and how to stop it and how to prosecute it in Pakistan. And then finally, there needs to be a, a more clear um, legislation passed in Pakistan regarding hate crime because the one that's currently in existence is conflated and oftentimes doesn't work to assist the minorities such as the Ahmadiyya community or the Shia community in Pakistan. And the second and perhaps one that gets a lot of attention in the international media um, and something that a speaker brought up earlier today is the issue of blasphemy. The issue of blasphemy laws in Pakistan is one that has been weaponized against the minorities of Pakistan. Allegations of blasphemy are, are essentially lodged against individuals for a, a ton of reasons. Um, if there's a land dispute between a Sunni and an Ahmadi or a Shia, then that Sunni may claim that that individual has committed blasphemy. And the way in which the prosecution and the way in which almost mob violence works, just the accusation alone can make that person lose their lives. Um, and if that's the case, then we need to deal with the underlying problem of the, of the blasphemy laws, which is from the Pakistani penal codes, um, articles 153, 258, 255, 250, 8A, B, and C, all of these laws um, in some ways have to be amended or changed in a way um, that looks at how individuals are abusing blasphemy laws to prosecute, to persecute, to damage, um, and to continually damage minority communities in Pakistan, whether they be Ahmadi, whether they be Shia, as I mentioned earlier. Um, in many ways, what we see in, in, in Pakistan is um, second-class citizenship essentially awarded to Ahmadis. Um, and other minorities as well, but especially because of the Second Amendment to the Pakistani Constitution, um, there is certainly a second-class element of citizenry in Pakistan, and that's something that needs to be addressed. Now, laying out all these problems, which I'm sure many of you who are from Pakistan already know, you might want to ask me, okay, now you've told us a problem that gave us a solution. Unfortunately, it's not an easy solution. It requires change from the establishment within Pakistan that I don't predict happening anytime soon because it hasn't happened over the last 40 years. However, I had one conversation today that I want to sort of highlight the importance of with one of the young individuals who walked me around and gave me a tour. Um, and he said, it's so interesting and important that even though I'm from a Pakistani background, um, and in Pakistan I might not be able to mix or to discuss or to have friends from other communities within the Muslim community. I'm here in America, I have friends who are Sunni, I have friends who are Shia, I have different kinds of friends. And perhaps one place to start change in Pakistan is from the immigrants who have left Pakistan, who are now interacting with other kinds of sects and other kinds of cultures within the Islamic, um, Islamic thought, essentially, that maybe in Pakistan they would not be able to do. If you can build those connections, um, I think here, and start sort of pushing back in Pakistan to try and force at least remedial or at least some kind of gradual change, um, that might be one way forward. And so perhaps communities like this one and, and gatherings like this one and, and being invited to, to this convention is a very important issue, I think, because um, diaspora Muslim communities should be working together, not only to improve Muslim you know, quality of life in the United States, but also back home. Um, to impact or affect some kind of change 
to what I describe as very discriminatory and second-class citizenry laws in Pakistan. And I'd like to thank you for um, allowing me to speak today and would welcome anyone speaking afterwards. Thank you very much.